What's going on everybody and welcome back to Comic Breakdown. If you guys are new to the channel, do me a favor and hit that sub button, hit that notification bell, make sure you're not missing any of the awesome content that we have coming out. Now with this video, we are jumping into Red Knight issue number 6, part of our Indie Comics Weekend, coming from Manos Publishing. Written by Justin Cristelli, and if you haven't been keeping up with this line, go ahead, check out the link in my description as well as the top of this video. It will get you completely caught up on everything going on with the Red Knight. Now this is another one of those deep indie comics. One of the ones that you can only find in the Kickstarters. So please make sure that you go and buy the comic if you're enjoying it. Be sure to check out Manos Publishing to ensure that you are keeping up to date with all of the newest comics. Now I think up to this point, Justin Criselli has already written, I think, issue 12. So this is a line that is going to continue to go as long as people keep supporting it. Now previously we saw Red Knight forming a secret partnership with the police detective Martha Brown. She agreeing not to arrest him in exchange for his help on cases. She'll also help train him to be able to fight crime. Because all Todd ever wanted to actually do was to be a superhero. As he, as he gazed starward, as he daydreamed about being that hero, he found himself with super strength. And over time, he found the ability to go out and make some change. But living in a world where you have to be a licensed superhero, he is working illegally with Martha Brown, doing this specifically to stay under the radar. And so with that being said, let's dive into this breakdown. Alright gang, so our story, it starts out with an individual looking like they got eaten to death by birds with feathers everywhere with some dead crows here and there and an individual on the ground murdered covered in lacerations now this is just setting the stage for us letting us know what to expect coming into this comic but that's what takes us to a little bit later with two police detectives getting ready to arrest an individual by the name of Steve Nips. Now this guy recognizing that two police officers have been following him, they want to ask him some questions. He runs into his house and he tells his girlfriend to keep them busy. They figured out that he's been selling BAM and he has to be able to try to get rid of it before they come at him. Before they're able to arrest him and find the evidence against him. And so with him going and running in his room, trying to drink that BAM. No, remember the BAM, what they're referring to is the, the stuff that makes individuals superhuman. And we've covered that in the last couple of issues because we had an individual named by the name of Brick who was trying to sell this stuff on the street with the Red Knight and Martha Brown bringing them down. And this, this is the last of it. But with Red Knight jumping into the room, and him being an illegal superhero, the police are also after him. And so with their guns drawn on him, they tell him to surrender. They tell him to put his hands up and put them behind his back. But of course, the Red Knight does not listen. He jumps out the window and he hightails it as fast as he possibly can. And on his way back to his uncle, Martha Brown gives him a call saying that she has another mission set up for him. Now talking to his uncle, his uncle's a little bit concerned because they don't really know anything about Martha Brown. Outside of the fact she is a police officer, having him work under the radar. But outside of that, they don't know anything of who she is, what she's doing with all the individuals they capture, what they're doing with the technology that they capture. Saying that it's simply going to a safe place and they don't ask any more questions. Or at least they haven't up to this point. And so more than anything, his uncle is really telling him to just be careful. Not to be so trusting of every single person that we are working with. That while me and you may be family, Martha Brown simply is not that. And while it may look like she has the best of intentions, it could very easily be something else if we let our guard down. But that's what brings us to a little bit later. And we're coming up to a little farmhouse. And the Red Knight, he goes inside to investigate what's going on here. To find some kind of evidence that is going to help him and this bird murder because the individual that owned this place was one named Margaret Bird and she just so happens to be the mother of Dana Bird. 
He was the wheelman in a bank robbery, but because there was a wreck while they were escaping, he was the only one that was caught. And though he never dimed out anybody else, he sat there in prison all by himself. But one day, he was able to escape. And the way he was able to escape is that an entire flock of crows came over to him, they lifted him up, and they just flew him out of prison. Just prior to that, his mother had died. And then a few days after that, an individual by the name of Zach Myers, he had been pecked to death by birds in his own apartment, which we saw in the beginning of this issue. But as he looks around for any kind of evidence that could point to where her son is, the Red Knight does not realize that Bird is sitting right here in the house, hiding in the shadows. Now, Red Knight tells him, you know, you must give up. You have to give up immediately. You have to stop what you're doing. You know, he's a brand new superhero. So he's really trying to play the superhero part, like a rookie cop would on the beat. But he learns very quickly that the bird's not going anywhere. He's not leaving anywhere. He's not doing anything that Red Knight wants him to do. And almost in an instant, we are seeing dozens and dozens and dozens of birds come flying in. And they just go pecking the heck out of Red Knight. With the Red Knight on the ground. With him unable to do anything. Trying to protect his face the best he possibly can. We see his uncle walk into the room. And he drops some smoke grenades. So it clears out everybody. Telling the Red Knight that he needs to stay out of Bird's business. And if he doesn't. That he will send his friends after him. All of his little crow friends will come and end his life. And with that, we see Bird lifted off by all of his crow companions up into the air. With the Red Knight being able to survive this encounter. Recognizing that they are going to go after the other individuals that were part of the robbery. Saying that they have to get to them before Bird is able to go and kill them. Little did they know that Bird already made it to one of them. To him and his girlfriend, sending his crows inside, they peck, they scratch, they kill Donnie and his girlfriend right here on the spot. And so with the Red Knight, Martha Brown and his uncle all sitting down trying to figure out what they're going to do next. Going through all of this paperwork, seeing if there's any kind of letter, maybe something back and forth between Bird and his mother. Maybe something will let them know what is going on here, how they can stop it, and how how they can bring his superpowers to an end. And as the uncle is going through all of this paperwork, he sees a letter written by Bird's mother, and it has a pentagram on it. And Martha Brown lets us know that this has something to do with some kind of spell, some kind of incantation for a magical spell. And so she gives the Red Knight a card. A card for an individual known as Mr. Trick. Now going into this magic shop, the Red Knight, he's not sure what exactly he's trying to figure out here. But talking to Trick himself, he shows him the incantation. Shows him what this is. Trying to find out any information that Trick may be able to give him. And he tells us that it is a nature controlling spell. A thousand years ago, a coven discovered a way to tap into nature itself and control it with the power of thought. And so one's will could control any animal or storm. They had planned to be able to take over the entire world, but the plan had backfired on them. And that's because of all the things, self-doubt is the thing that can take you down. With the spell bonding with your soul, it's not just another weapon, it is a part of you. So feeling any kind of guilt or self-hatred, it can be deadly. And that is why the, the spell became lost for such a long time. Now of course Mr. Trick is going to ask, where did you find this? Where did you get this? And the Red Knight tells him, you know, uh, uh, no one, just a friend. Like, just a friend, don't worry about it, I gotta be on my way. And he says, okay, yeah, sure. Tell Martha Brown that I said hello. But that's what will bring us to later that evening. Picking up at some kind of sports stadium, we are picking up with a security guard. Because right now, the Red Knight and Martha Brown are trying to protect him. Knowing that he is the last piece of the puzzle. He is the last individual that was there in that robbery. Now, of course, he's, doing, he's denying this. He's denying it with every bit of energy he has. That is until Bird comes flying in. With him coming and flying in, and Crow surrounding all of them, with the birds trying to pick up the security guard. 
and I misspoke because the Red Knight is not with them right now. It is just Martha Brown. But this is where she texts the Red Knight, letting him know that it is time that he joins the party. And so we can only assume that he has been waiting nearby for his opportunity to try and take down Bird. And with Bird having the security guard surrounded by all of his little new pet companions, getting ready to peck his eyes out, letting him know that he is responsible for everything that happened. He is the reason that he was not there when his mother died. That if they hadn't left him, but they had time to grab the money, that he may have been able to see his mother's last breath, been able to be there for him. But days before she died, she created this incantation. She made this magic spell, that way her son could be able to escape prison. And now that he has, he is enacting revenge on everybody that has wronged him. Now the Red Knight, he comes swooping in, he grabs a security guard, and he tries hightailing it out of here. But they are simply not faster than birds. And with the entire flock headed down directly to the Red Knight, we see them getting pecked to death. With them getting pecked to death, with them both on the ground, with birds standing over them, the Red Knight takes this as an opportunity to make him feel like nothing. Saying that if all you wanted was revenge, then you must be next on the hit list. Because you blame everyone else for your actions. But at the end of the day, you're the one that decided to rob that bank. You're the one that decided to get behind that wheel. You're the one that crashed that vehicle. So if anybody is responsible, then you must blame yourself. You must own up to the fact that you are also just as responsible as everyone else that you are trying to kill. And with this, a sense of self-hate fills his body. This self-hate causes all of the crows to turn on him. Exactly what Mr. Trick was telling him would happen. With all of the shame building up inside of Bird, all of the birds start to turn on him. The entire flock. They start to rip him to pieces. And as he slowly starts to go down to the ground, the Red Knight rises, telling him that he's just worthless, that this is his fault, that he is responsible, and all of this is just eating him up inside, allowing the crows to devour him whole. Now the crows fly off before they kill this man, and the security guard gets arrested. And so now with their guys in jail, they had Mr. Trick create a binding spell this stops Bird from using his powers ever again. And with Todd making his way back home, realizing that he left his mom on hold, hasn't been in contact with her, he leaves her a note, looking out the window, he sees a crow, and it kind of freaks him out a little bit. He's not sure if, if Bird is still out there watching him or not. But that is where this issue will end. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments. You know, like I've said every issue so far, the, the art style isn't necessarily for me, but I do feel like it has gotten better. So I definitely give it huge thumbs up for that. It definitely looks a lot better. It definitely looks a lot more professional. But I also believe that, that the art style really does fit the Red Knight really well, especially after reading six issues of this. The art style really does start to grow on you. It really does feel a part of who the Red Knight is. Now, I, I definitely have told you guys before, I'm definitely a fan of the Red Knight, uh, of Justin's writing. It is just absolutely amazing. I even, you know, bought a $100 Funko Pop, part of the Kickstarter program that their uh, Kickstarter rewards, not program, that, uh, that he had not too long back. And I think that it's even cheaper now to be able to get one of those Funkos. So if you guys enjoy this artwork, if you enjoy this story, if you enjoy anything coming from Manos Publishing, be sure to check out the links in my description as well as the top of this video. Be sure to go support this guy. Make sure that you're buying the comic because every time you buy a comic, it helps support the indie comic industry. And these guys are, are straight crowdfunded comics. And so you would be doing them a great, great honor by supporting their comic. But yeah, let me know what you guys think down in the comments. If you have not yet, do me a favor, hit that sub button, hit that notification bell, make sure you're not missing any of the awesome content we have coming out, and until the next breakdown.